Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, miss you already, Stingrays. Sorry I could not be with you today. I'm receiving some tech training, and I will be passing that on to our lovely staff at Wake Forest. In the meantime, though, today you will be working on a math lab with the substitute. This math lab is going to introduce percent of change and percent of error. Now you might be saying, what is percent of change? Percent of change, you're measuring the percentage of the increase or de decrease in a particular value. Um, percent of error, you're measuring the percentage of error of how far off you are from the actual or correct amount. You'll have two simple formulas, and these two simple formulas are almost identical. Um, it's just very important that you can identify the different parts of the problem. I will be modeling four problems for you, four out of the 11 problems. Make sure that you follow through step by step. And when you do these problems on your own, I want you to do them on a separate piece of paper. Please show all of your work and start each problem by writing down the formula. Please do not take any shortcuts. You might say, why do I have to do it? The reason why I want you to do it is we are really only going to spend one day going over this. So as much practice as you can get will help you memorize and, and commit these formulas to memory so um, you'll be prepared for the upcoming test. So um, if, you, if you do these 11 problems and you write down the formula each time, you should be in good shape. Um, well, let's get started on the first problem. Boys and girls, let's look at problem number one. It's a percent of change problem. And we read, Mr. Havel bought a car for $2,400 and sold it for $2,700. What was the percent of profit for Mr. Havel in selling the car? Well, the first thing we want to do with any type of percent of change problem is we, we need to set up this formula. Okay, the, the percent of change is found um, by taking the difference of amounts. Okay, and that's your change. That's, what's, that's the change that's going on, the difference of amounts. And divide that by the original amount or value. Okay, so when I take a look at the amounts, I see that the car was bought for $2,400. It was sold for $2,700. We want to find the change or the difference between these two. So I'm going to take the larger amount, which is $2,700, and I will subtract the lesser amount, which is $2,400, and I'm going to divide that by the original amount, which the original amount of the car was $2,400. Once I find the difference, which will be $2,700 minus $2,400, that'll give me $300, and I will divide that by the original cost once again, which is $2,400. And if you um, divide, you will find out that the answer is 125 thousandths. Now that is a decimal. We want to change this decimal to a percentage. And, and the way we change any decimal to a percentage is we simply take the decimal point and we move it one, two places over to the right, which would give us 12 and a half percent. And this is a 12 and a half percent. This is very important. It's an increase. Okay, there's a profit being made. Okay, and that's that's what makes sense. The, the car or the problem itself um, even hints that it says that there's a profit being made. But even if that wasn't the case, we would be able to use logic which says if I bought the car for $2,400 and sold it for $2,700, I'm making $300. The question is though, um, what percentage of increase actually took place? And that's, we, we take the, the difference of amounts, which is $300, and we divide it by the original amount, which was $2,400, and that gives us a 12.5 or a 12.5% increase. Let's try another one. Stingrays, let's take a look at number three on our worksheet. Um, this will be the last um, percent of change problem that I'll show you. The rest you'll do on your own. Um, but once again, let's read the problem. It says a manufacturing company with 450 employees begins a new product line and must add 
81 more employees. Okay, so we, we, need, we have an increase of employees here. What is the percent of the increase in the number of employees? Well, the first thing we should just do is take, take some notes. We know that we're starting out, okay, we can annotate. Annotating is a great idea. We know that we're starting out with 450 employees and then we add 81 more. So our starting number is 450 and we know that our new number of employees is going to be that 450 plus 81 which is equal to 531. Okay so that's our our new number of employees. Uh, once again um, to find percent of change we need to start out by finding the difference in our amounts our starting amount and ending amount so we take the difference in amounts that's our change and we are going to divide that by our original or in this case our starting amount um, the difference in amounts we need to take our high number and subtract our low number and some of you might be saying I already know what this is they told us what it is and that's true um, we know that we are going to get 531 minus 450 is going to be the 81 new employees and we will divide that by the original amount see 81 employees that's the change okay there's been 81 employees added to this company um, this manufacturing company. So that's our change, the positive change, and we need to divide that by the original amount of employees. And when we do that, we will get 18 hundredths, and we want to change this decimal to a percent. And how do we do that? When we change it, we change a decimal to a percent by simply moving the decimal point one, two places to the right, which would give us an 18 percent increase. Okay, think this change is a positive increase. It says here that we're adding, and usually that information is disclosed within the the problem itself, um, pretty obviously. Um, well, there you have our second example problem. I think I'm pretty confident that you guys should be able to figure out the rest on your own. Have fun. Well, that was easy enough. Stingrays, let's look at the second half of this worksheet. Now we're dealing with percent of error word problems. Now, percent of error is has it has some similarities to percent of change. Um, the setup is very similar, but with percent of error, we're trying to find um, not necessarily the increase or decrease um, in amounts. Rather, we're trying to see um, what the how far off you are from the actual amount. So there's the estimated amount and the actual amount. So when we read through this problem, it's very important that we that we find the the estimated value as well as the actual value. Let's read the problem. Samantha S. Sloppiness measured the volume of her soda before she drank it for her mid-morning snack. Not a very healthy snack. She measured the volume of the 12-ounce bottle to be 14 ounces. Well, right here we said it says she measured the volume of the 12-ounce bottle. So it is a 12-ounce bottle. That is the actual amount. Okay, you have to understand the English language the way it works okay it, there's a statement here she measured the volume of the 2b okay now this is her estimated okay she measured it okay to be 14 ounces so we can see that she overshot it a little bit well how do we find the percent of error once again we need to find um, the difference of values okay and th this is our error okay this is going to be our error the difference in values divided by the actual or the correct value so the difference in values um, we need to take 14 ounces subtract 12 ounces from it 
and then divide it by the actual amount, which is 12 ounces. And that will give us the error. The error is she was two ounces off. And we divide that by the actual um, value, which was 12 ounces. It was a 12 ounce bottle. And when we do our division, 2 divided by 12 will give us a repeating decimal, actually, um, of 16 hundredths. And that 6 is just going to keep on repeating. Um, once again, we want to move, um, we want to change this decimal to a percent. It's very easy. We just take the decimal point, move it over one, two places to the right. And that will give us 16.6% as a repeating decimal. Okay, so she, the percentage of error, and this was an error, she was roughly 16% off. Last one. Boys and girls, let's look at our last sample problem that we will work on together. After this problem, you're on your own and you should be quite capable of figuring out the rest on your own. So let's go to number four in our handout and read it together. It says, Drew D. Dingling came to Miraculous with a problem. Drew was told to measure 50 centimeters of copper wire to use an experiment. Since his ruler only measured 45 centimeters, he used this amount of wire and his experiment was a failure. Well, that's no surprise. Once again, when we're looking with percent of error, the two important amounts that we have to find are the actual amount, and in this case, the 50 centimeters. That was the actual amount. That's what he needed for the experiment. But he just substituted, he, est he estimated that um, 45 would be enough, and he was wrong. Okay, once again, especially when you're working with chemicals, you should follow the directions thoroughly. Um, okay, so how do we find the percent of error? The first thing is we need to find the difference, the difference in our values. And that's the actual and the estimate. Okay, and we, then we need to divide this difference, okay, which is this difference in values, that's the error. Um, th then we need to divide this by the actual amount, the correct amount. Okay, so we're going to take 50 centimeters and subtract 45 centimeters from it, and we're going to divide that by the actual or the correct amount, which is 50 centimeters. And when we take 50 centimeters and subtract 45, we will get 45 centimeters. And then we divide that by 50 centimeters, which is the correct amount. There's a five centimeter error, okay? This is the error, okay? The, the difference in values will always give us the error, but we wanna know the percent error, so we need to divide it by the actual amount, the correct amount, and that will give us one-tenth. Now what do we do with that? Well, we, we once again, we want to have a percent. So we need to change this decimal to a percent. So we got to move our decimal point to the right two places, one, two. Now there's only one digit, but that's not a problem. You guys guessed it. This placeholder here will fill with a zero and what our percentage will be is 10, there's a 10% error. Okay, and that is our answer. There was a 10% error in this experiment. Well, I hope this was helpful, and you need to finish up these problems on your own. Well, boys and girls, I hope you had fun. I know I did, and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Keep in mind um, that you have homework tonight. There's also a video that goes along with tonight's homework on my website, so if you have any questions or concerns, please check out that video. And I will see you tomorrow, and there just might be a pop quiz. Goodbye.